Hello, Wembley. Um, so we made it through day one almost. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the intersection of music and brands right now. So we're going to have a conversation with uh, someone from the brand side, someone from the artist side. So I want to bring up our two panelists, Tierney Stout from Bands. And Drew McTaggart from Rouge. Dear Rouge, you screwed me up because he's like, when we go to the States, everyone says Rogue. And I'm like, all right, you just psyched me out. Yeah, I psyched you out. Dear Rouge, the band. So before we get into that, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction um, around the intersection of music and brands. So can we bring up some slides? Who doesn't love a good slide? That's not a slide. Anyway, I'll tell you a little about me first. So anyway. I've been doing this in the music marketing space for my whole career. I started out at Maverick on the music publishing side. I supervised music for film and TV. I had a marketing firm in New York uh, with a friend of mine who's a hip hop manager. We worked for corporate brands, helping them set up entertainment, pop culture strategies. Coke became a client of ours in 2008. In 2010, I joined Coke as the head of global music. So all the music around our global platforms like the FIFA World Cup, the Olympics, the Spotify partnership I put together, using music to connect with audience in new ways like podcasting series with iHeart and live streaming channels and building the capabilities around how our marketers around the world use music. I did that for eight years and then I left and started doing consulting. Uh, the music division is a little sort of a soft launch preview of something that uh, I've been working on, which is sort of an outsourced music division for brands that don't have the capabilities. I feel like the space that we're in is such a massive opportunity because there is so much audience there, but brands aren't investing enough. Thankfully, we have a brand that's doing it right, and we're going to get to that conversation. But the truth is today, people have unprecedented control over what they consume. We know this. This is our challenge as marketers. Yet when we look at music, it is growing. The amount of time people are spending with it continues to grow, 35.7 hours per week. And it's things that people gravitate towards, even on new devices. When you get your Alexa, your Dot in your house, you're using music. You're using music as the top use case because it's just something that people are passionate about. There's this natural magnet there. So it's really an under-leveraged marketing opportunity. Michelle Obama said this during the Grammys. I, I think it was one of the most profound, like, just greatest quotes around how music helps her tell her story. And what it also does is shapes her story, not just as individuals, because music is the number one signal of identity for us as people, but even as brands. Music can help us shape our story as a brand. And that's what we're going to get into today in the conversation. And we see this. We see 21st century brands. We see once, brands that were once challengers coming up and using music to win that share of hearts and minds. And listen, I had that in long before I knew you were on the panel. And I, like I always that. look to Vans because Vans is a great example. And we're lucky to have that conversation in a few minutes. But there's a lot of misconceptions around music. The intersection of music and marketers. Marketers think it's all these things. It's unstructured. It's complex. It's hard. It's expensive. And it can be all those things, but it doesn't have to be, right? And I think what I want to get to, uh, the message I want to get to brand marketers and agencies and consultants is that music is a very, very powerful way. And it is complex, but the rewards, the opportunities you have to connect with music through something that people are most passionate about will give you the return that you're looking for. And how that happens is creating success and shared value between really three stakeholders in this equation. It's you, it's the brand, it's the product, it's the service that you have. It's the audiences you're trying to reach, and it's the music makers. And that's why we have Drew here, because it's such an important part of that uh, equation to create that value between all three. For the brand to bring their strategy to life through music, what are you trying to do, and how can music help you achieve that objective? For audiences, how do you make it simple, compelling, entertaining? How do you live in those environments where they're consuming music or going to festivals or enjoying music with their friends? How are you there in a really authentic way that's adding value and making that experience better? And then music makers. When you partner with Drew, this is not a transaction. You don't hire him to come in and do a song and dance. You want to build a relationship. You want to build a relationship, a collaborative relationship, both creatively and personally with music artists and the music industry as a whole, because those relationships are going to be really, really important for how you work together with music should you choose to go forward. Um, and uh, yeah, just a little quote, why not? Um, but I think this is true. Music does sort of unlock something in us, and I think that it can unlock something for brands. And with no further ado, we're going to get into a conversation. And before we do, we're going to give 
Tierney and Drew a chance to sort of introduce themselves, get a little background on who they are, what they're up to, and uh, let's start with all things Tierney and Vans. Cool. Um, I have been working in music for 15 years. Um, I had always worked on the music industry side. Um, so I started, um, I mean, outside of like venues and um, small gigs like that, but uh, started at music programming at South by Southwest for the music festival. Did that for four years, um, but being a born and raised Texas Texan, needed out, so moved to New York without any plan. Started doing music PR, which, although a very uh, crucial part of, I feel like I'm in front of you, I'm just getting back. <laughs> although a very crucial part, part to the industry, I quickly realized it wasn't for me. Then segued, um, I worked at The Orchard, which is a digital distributor um, for both music and film, but oversaw the global, or the digital marketing arm for The Orchard, and then shifted to the brand side. I started working at Gibson a few years ago um, and really liked that. I really liked the segue from PR to marketing because I learned that you're, you, you help craft the story instead of telling a writer to write about it. But then segueing to the brand side, um, I really liked that. And then, then getting a taste of that, I always had my eye on Vans. Um, and I was like, that's the brand I want to work for in the music space, but there weren't any jobs. So. Um, a year ago, moved out to LA uh, to start um, overseeing global music marketing. So that is what I do at Vans, and that's how I got there. Cool. Drew. I, um, I've always wanted to be a musician, and um, because it's very unlikely in this day, I actually went to business school and started in marketing. <laughs> like a good son. And, uh, and when I met my wife, we started making music organically, and we turned it into this pop rock duo called Dear Rouge. And a year into our marriage, the music started going on the radio, in Canadian radio. Quit our jobs a year into music, and we've been doing that for the past seven years. And now on the flip side, we are self-managed because I have that background, and I get to be a part of all the business side, which I enjoy. And I started a company called Trophy Club, which manages uh, producers on the West Coast. Very cool. Yeah. So your plan B, your plan A became your plan A, and uh, you didn't have to go to the plan B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're opposite. Cool. I didn't go to school. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> you're the musician, and he's Yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> so let's dig in. Let's talk about Vans, because when you talk to the marketing industry and the music industry about Vans and music, it's one of those just really, really amazing examples of a brand that looks at music as an investment versus a spend, where you spend the time with music and maybe you're doing different things over time, but it really is an investment that's really starting to pay off. I mean, from a you know, brand perspective, a lift perspective, and every sort of metric you could, you could think about. So tell us about that. How do you look at music as an investment versus an expense? Um, when you mentioned this earlier, I was so excited. <laughs> that just means that we're doing it right. Um, but it's, it's part of our DNA. So we have our four main pillars. We have action sports, which is a huge part of our DNA. This is four. Uh, music, art, and street culture, which sadly street culture, everything else just kind of gets lumped in, like mm. food or fashion. Or, <laughs> um, but it, it, because of that, it's, it's, a, it's one of our main pillars. It's something that um, is omnipresent in every single department. Um, which I think does make Vans a bit unique in that. I think it's present in our retail stores, from the music you play in the retail stores. It's present in um, even just, we do a lot of experiential activations with the House of Vans, but again, everybody does that. But then also in our windows, uh, we don't cast models, so you'll see real people. So therefore, like, is it a musician that we are working with or want to work with? And then the product collapse. So because of that, it truly is just ingrained in our DNA. So I think that investment in that part is also how can we authentically tell a story knowing that it touches every single department within the company. I, I love that. And uh, I always sort of equate music to design, right? Which is not something that lives in a vertical from a marketing perspective. It really is a horizontal that touches everything. Right. And it sounds like that's the way you're using music too. Yeah, I, because I, again, I still, I, everybody says I need to stop saying I'm new. But it feels like it because it's a company <laughs> that's been around for 50 years and has played so long in the music space where all brands want to play mm. in music nowadays. So, but because of that, um, because of our history in the space, and because now just the size of the company, we actually were becoming kind of disjointed. We weren't showing up maybe in the same way, we weren't having the same voice, or we were doing cool stuff and not talking about it. Mm. Like one person was talking to Freddie Gibbs in Seoul, and one person was talking to Freddie Gibbs in Chile. So it was awesome that we all had the same idea, 
but we could have rolled it into a bigger story for the artist. So we've kind of just been pulling that back and saying, you know, how can we authentically tell that bigger story for the artist within our brand? Very cool. And financially support them with those opportunities too. Very cool. Well, let's talk about that, telling the stories and supporting artists. So Drew, when you look at what you're doing right now, whether it's, you know, where you are in the process, either you're recording or you're touring, you've just released, you're about to release, you're writing, what are the things you're doing and, and how can a brand play a role to help you with that as an artist? Well, first of all, it depends on what the brand is. Um, that's the first step mm. where you want to find that win-win where it's, it's a link with the artist. Um, but there's so many different avenues now through the business side to link artists, um, whether it's a festival, like I know Corona and Red Bull, they put on shows, book bands, and support bands big time. Um, and uh, in also opening up another side to our music to a different audience uh, to be able to use the brand to expose our music to other um, potential listeners. Very cool. And so when you look at brands, when you think about the brands that you would like to work with, what does it come from? Like just things that you naturally use in your everyday life or things that you could have a conversation with your fans about that feels authentic? Yeah, I think it comes down to being authentic. You have to be who you are, and as a musician, you know, when we're on social media, when we are uh, responsible for our band, we're not trying to be something else, we're trying to be who we are. So when you look at a brand joining up with us, you want that to be something very organic and something that's already, that you're using or wearing or support, because then the collaboration goes way deeper because the artist actually loves the brand, uses the brand, and is proud to represent the brand. And I think that's the power of bands, right? I mean, you know, you, you're on stage or you're, you know, whatever you're doing as an artist, you're probably wearing something on your feet, right? Yep. For the most part. Right? No, I, I, I actually say that all the time. We had, well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, also, I think it's easy because people want to play, are so eager to play in the music space to forget about the product element. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was your first part is the brand. And there's times, you know, when I came in where I was like, why did we program them? They were wearing boots. And just a reminder of like, if those guys are too cool for our shoes, then what message are we telling the sea of 800 kids at the show? So just making sure that like back to the basics, we're aligning with the artist that actually likes our product. Yeah. And if they don't, that's okay. They're a fool, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> like there are so many yeah. bands out there. Um, so I think that's that's key in terms of authenticity. And on that, um, some of these gigs or brand partnerships can be so lucrative. Mm the band would say yes no matter what. Right. Which you have to be careful for. If, you, if you're dealing with a lot of money, I would say, uh, depending on who the band is, most bands would say yes. And I, I come into that all the time where, and I was mentioning this earlier today, is, I mean, that's the trend in the music space, especially in the sneaker space, is a very high dollar contract, truncated. Mm -hmm. And when I first came on Vans, somebody was like, oh, Brock Hampton's contract is up with Converse. Are you interested? And like my gut reaction, it was like, absolutely not like it just felt gross and not because I don't like Brockhampton or but like you know they yeah. they just got out of bed with somebody yeah, yeah, else yeah. like I don't <laughs> I want to build it and we and yeah. often like if it's a large artist this large hip-hop artist was like hey this guy has a festival do you want to sponsor and I was like hey you know we've we've never given him shoes before yeah. like it genuinely will make sure like do you like our shoe and then they just kind of like hung up because they were looking for the paycheck. That wasn't right. what they were after. I wasn't even also going to say no, but I just asked to send them free stuff. And they're like, bye. And like for me, that's just a non-starter because I don't, you know, it's not about the paycheck. So do you think that, you know, when I sort of talked in the opening, like there's a disconnect between the amount of just money brands invest in sports, $20 billion, the amount of money they invest in music, $1.6, $2 billion, right? Significantly less. Music is a big a passion point. And I think brands get burned because they don't think about those things, right? right? Because brands will just cut the check and then be upset because they're not wearing the shoes or they're not drinking the drink or they do a deal with somebody else as soon as the contract is up. Right. So how do you build that, um, you know, for, for um, the industry as a whole to grow, you need to have more people like yourself internally playing those roles. Like, how do you tell brands, like, how do you give them advice on what they should do when they start, a, start thinking about music in their marketing? I mean, I think... Besides hire you. Yeah. Okay. I, I said it's not a money thing. Oh, yeah, but, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just knowing your product's role and catering to that for the artist. Um, 
you know, on a, on a simple level, like I tell everybody on our global team, like it's, it's as simple as the, even the hospitality aspect. Yeah. Like we have a venue across the street from us, which is pretty fortunate. So if we see them routing through, hit them up and say, come on over, we have a skate park. Yeah. We don't even necessarily have to have a content opportunity, yeah. but actually showing that you care and not just a paycheck or, or faking, you know, like showing them that, you know, we not only like would appreciate your partnership, but we actually are a fan of your music, are a fan of you. I think that's key. I, I, for other brands, I think, again, it just it goes back to knowing your product and your role in them. I was saying this earlier, like, I really loved what Sonos did a while back, and I forget now even exactly how they did it. But they, they partnered with artists, and it was around, it was around like a freedom of speech or there was, something was being taken away, mm. and they rallied artists, and everybody organically was posting their product, mm. but it was about something that they were passionate about, and it related to their product. I think right. that's important, is tapping into how can our product be of use yeah. to you. Very cool. And Drew, we were talking earlier about um, you know, things that you'd like to do with the brand, um, and we said you, know, you can't dance with the Backstreet Boys in a Super Bowl commercial, because that's been done, which I know that was your dream. Yeah, um, yeah first time. Right. Robbed. But you did talk Just, about you know, the idea of collaborating with the brand, and as opposed to a brand coming to you and saying, hey, here's our idea, you'd like to develop something together, and the benefits of doing that. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think more than ever, artists are wanting to collaborate when they choose to accept a business into their art or link up with it so that it's sincere, natural. And I think from the artist side, there's a lot of insight that a brand would be able to uh, grab a hold of, uh, a different side from the artist side, a creative side, where they're thinking about it as content and art mm -hmm. and not thinking about the marketing objective or the campaign that's being run. They're thinking about how it links up with them. And uh, I think uh, a lot of artists would like to collaborate because if they're a part of the process, then when you do link up and you release or do that campaign, the artist was a part in creating it and they'll support it and they'll be sincere about it that they were involved in it right away. Mm -hmm. And that depends on the campaign, depends on the company. Yeah. But uh, the collaboration is the, the biggest win because like you said, it's this relationship, a deeper relationship of right from the beginning being linked with the brand and it's you guys are supporting you're at the shows or you're seeing the band right. and it's not just we need music for this commercial pick this band and it kind of sort of algorithm it's more the human element I think that's the key is the sponsorship versus partnership you right. know, are you paying for this relationship or are you in it together and have similar angles <gasps> absolutely and we know Vans does a lot in the live music space and has done a lot in the live music space, and that's great because uh, artists get to reach audiences and there's that sort of share of audiences that you, that you create. Uh, talk about something maybe in the content creation space that you get too excited that Vans is, is either doing or maybe has coming, if you can talk Gladly, about Gladly, because okay. um, to your point, that is a huge strength of ours is the live experience. But that's such a strong tie. You know, I, I was saying earlier, I lived down the street from the House of Vans in Brooklyn prior to having the job and would go there a lot. And I just thought everybody knew about House of Vans. And then I moved out to LA and assumed, like, especially if you worked in the music industry, you knew about House of Vans. And that's just not true, um, not even within the music industry. So, you know, I think that strong tie experience is really important. But now, uh, since I came in the past year, is what is that broad reach play? You know, how. How do we take all these cool things that we've built in that ethos, like out of House of Vans, but really message better? Um, this is who we are in music. And so, one we just launched, um, it's called Side Strike Sessions. It's a giant shoebox, or the treatment is a giant shoebox drops. It's like a diorama. It opens, and then the band's playing inside. So, we shoot it out of our office, and then it's a different mural inside. So, it, it partners with our art pillar. But that's that's kind of taking that live performance yeah. um, piece. And then we'll be rolling out soon. We have this pre-existing series for action sports called Classic Tales, where it's you know these talking heads and these characters that are our skate team or surf team. And they're talking about you know when they got stoned and their van crashed, like these great stories. And then it cuts to uh, Jay Howe's animation, who does all the Bob Berger animation. So it's almost like drunk history, like it animates their story. Yeah, so we'll start doing that for music because that's again, there's not all artists should have that talking head yeah. space. They're just not cut out for it. But there are some where it's like, oh my God, give that girl a mic. So, and so now we'll be doing that. And then 
Um, I always looked at the Coca-Cola sponsorship or partnership with Spotify because I just think it's insane how many brands still don't have any presence or just mm. it's just so working on building out um, a big Spotify partnership that I'm very excited about. That one I can't really talk about yet. But um, so really working on that broad reach, like we know who we are in music, but I think sometimes we forget that it might, you know, it might be a smaller pool. Mm -hmm. People know we play in it, but you know, yeah. what what is our position in it. That's right. And when you look at it from a corporate perspective, when you're having those conversations within a brand, like how do you deal with the fact that like all these things are, you know, sort of, it takes a while to see the results. Like going back to the idea of investment, like the right. things you do today, you're not going to see the return based on impressions, you know, that happen in the next 60 days, but you are going to see the impact they have on culture and what it can do for the brand. Is that sort of already ingrained in bands as a, as a company that culture marketing works and music is just a pillar of that, or is that still an ongoing conversation? No, I think I think it is ingrained. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think on how to elaborate on that, but it's it's definitely ingrained. I think so much that it's just mm. part of the fabric that it's yeah. not. It's. And I'll tell you, I mean, that's it's so, so great to hear because so many brands don't have that ingrained in, you know, in their DNA, right? Maybe they have it in their DNA in some way, but as far as it really being a, a, a tool to drive the business, like it's, it's, it's very few and far between. I think you see it more in brands that are culturally relevant like Vans or new brands like Lyft and Airbnb that are just, you know, less than 10 years old that are, that are growing and they're, you know, using music from the very beginning. But let's talk about the artist, uh, the collaboration piece again, because we, um, we were talking earlier about um, the idea that you have to love what you uh, are uh, getting in business with, right? right. And the fact that like, um, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for artists with brands. There's a lot of things happening. There's live music, there's content programs, there's all these things. How do you, what, what do you want from a brand right now? Like, what are the things that you're working on that you'd say, like, I would love a brand to come in and help us with X, Y, and Z. We talked a little bit about the promotion stuff. We talked about, you know, the, the idea of helping you create more content. I think, well, first of all, what you said about the Coca-Cola and the Spotify link mm -hmm. with advertising, being able to link it to playlists, be able to be a part of that as an artist. Mm -hmm. As a brand, you can come to the artist and say, this is an audience. You know, if, it, if the brand lines up and the artist feels that it's true about or sincere, yeah. then you're giving them an audience and you're, you're allowing them to reach a certain demographic that they wouldn't be able to reach. Or you'll be able to be linked up with this campaign through Spotify, which on the artist side of things, Spotify and streaming is the mecca. It's the goal that everybody's trying to achieve and to get more streams, get more listeners. So. Um, as a band that's developing, I would say that's, that's number one, the mm. more that bands link up with, with streaming, because it's, it's huge for them. And do you think about that, what's important for the artist when yeah. you think about the things you're going to do? Uh, absolutely. Especially, I think it helps coming from the industry side. Mm. Like, it kind of makes it more fun when you're on the brand side, because you finally have some money, but, <laughs> and like, can give it to people. Yeah. The, I remember the first time that I said, like, I think that's too much money. I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm saying that now, because on the other side, <laughs> you know, I was constantly trying to get it. But yeah. I think what's important as a brand in music is knowing what your value is, and not monetary value, but, you know, what are you bringing to the table outside of that paycheck? Don't get me wrong, the paycheck is hugely important, but like I was mentioning this earlier, is like, what we play in our retail store. There's no transaction there, but there's metrics around it. So, and if I know from the music side how important that is, so I can actually say to you, hey, we're gonna champion your new single in 1,000 plus retail stores, seven times a day, five times a day, whatever. All those kids get sick of the same yep. song in the store for one month. Yep. That's really powerful to be able to deliver that metric. So just knowing kind of, and I've, I've kind of, been working with the brand to also rewire how we break down the paycheck. Like when you see this one number, it might be like, oh, we don't do that. But what if we actually took ownership of all these paid opportunities that we actually already do yeah. to roll them into the authentic story and then it can't, because you hear all the time like, you know, we don't have perhaps a Nike budget, yeah. but maybe we'd be surprised yeah. if we roll all these paid opportunities into yeah. one and larger story. Absolutely, and I think those stories, you can either create them, they could come to you naturally, or you can sort of provoke them to come to you. Because one of the things we used to do at Coke is, um, if an artist would tweet at us and say, I genuinely love Coke and here's why, and da, 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 nine times out of 10, we'd partner with them. You know, it was 
And people didn't believe that we found artists off Twitter that were tweeting. And that's us. paying attention. You that's know? so important. And that's cool, right? So I think that you know, if you're a brand marketer out there, there are artists out there that love your brands. Can you get them to you know to come to you, right? Can you open that that floodgate of of artists? I mean, you know, we we loved it. I mean, even a company as big as Coke, Smart. we loved it, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do you source artists? They must come to you, you reach them. Like, how, how do you figure out who is uh, They definitely come to you. Who's bandwidth? <laughs> um, uh, but I think it's also just innate from working in music so long. I mean, you, um, it's a, I don't even know what like work and pleasure is. So I'm constantly reading about you know stuff that's trending. I also have a younger sister who's 22 years old, so I'm like, is that you know, mm. is that cool? <laughs> or there's a girl that's 25 in our office, and I'm like, Mel, sit right yeah. here, right. Um, and just and paying attention. And yeah. then again, do they like our brand? Just because like, yeah. you know, I have I have calls often where uh, you know a label or a manager is trying to explain the size of this artist, and I'm like, I I know how big that <laughs> artist is. I went as them for Halloween. I joked about that earlier, but that was a true story. And they were trying to explain it. I was like, no, 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 I, I, I was him. But, um, but, it, but that artist doesn't make sense yeah. for our brand. I, right. He loves our brand, and I want to never turn my back on that. I want to make mm. sure he has all the product. I'd like to maybe workshop some things behind the curtains. Maybe he helps with a curation yeah. piece. Or, but it's just, you know, there's it, the irony, and I was saying, I was having, drinks with this woman at Republic the other day. I was like, the irony is, is, you know, there's just some artists that ironically, if their face was in the window, they might actually not respect us as a brand the same way, or revere us uh, as the same right. way they do. Because we've always had that kind of skate underground kind of. So it's just, yeah. it's finding that balance because I never want to turn our back on those artists either. Mm. I very much appreciate their loyalty to Vans and realize the power of them wearing Vans every night yeah. on stage. So Absolutely. It's, it's kind of a dance there, but. Um, how do we find artists? I mean, they're, yeah. they're easy to find. They're everywhere. <laughs> and that goes, that goes true to what we were saying earlier, is that artists are looking for these opportunities because there are so many things that an artist needs either to you know, break through. I mean, in marketing an artist is, is everything from radio to video to content to live to brand partnerships. Like there's, you know, it's, it's an aggregate of the whole, which yeah. creates a really powerful marketing uh, plan for an artist, or even to motivate the label. Right, getting a uh, brand partnership is a great motivator for the label to maybe you know prioritize an artist as you know as their release is coming up. Yeah, totally. I, I think um, first of all, the band isn't looking for brands. You know, it's the furthest thing from our, our minds. We want to be uh, creating our art and sticking to what we do. But as an afterthought, when you have these labels and managers who are pairing you with with um, with brands, the rules have changed a bit. Hmm. Where there was a time you know, before my time where it was just a no-no, like you stayed away from associating yourself with brands and it was look, looking like you were selling out. <coughs> Whereas now it's changed, partly because of the content, because of the stuff that you're doing, the cool stuff. And another part is that, Money. yeah, the music industry got flipped on its head and labels, managers, everyone in the industry will want a partner because of the money. Which is, it sounds really horrible, but it's, it's, I mean, it's right it's, there, yeah. and you go, and that's why I, back earlier, I said you want to make sure the artist is sincere and organic, and yeah. you're partnering with them, rather than just a paycheck that they're trying to bury everything. Right. I mean, if we're doing our job right, then I mean, we don't at currently have any sort of ambassador model. So they're currently we do on the action sports. We do have our skaters yeah. and our skate team, and there's a contract, but not a music. Um, I've been looking at maybe mirroring something similar to action sports, mm. but right now it's just if we're doing our job right, there wouldn't be the equivalent of, hey, my contract's over. Mm. What's, you know, like I was saying earlier, we have, I really love looking at our action sports model because there's such a family vibe, and you hear Van's family all the time, but like Jeff Grosso, one of our legacy skaters, was judging our bake-off contest going into mm. the holidays. Like, they truly are family. They're always yeah. walking around. All of our conference rooms are named after them. Mm. So just really taking, like, we do have such a strong presence in music, but how can we, how can we shift it to kind of more even on the skate side? Like, I want an Anderson Pack conference room, yeah. you know, or something that 
really walks the walk a bit more on that side. Well, it's the human element to it. People forget that, like, whether you're an artist or a brand, like, we put these names and these sort of, you know, logos up in front of us, but, like, we're all people trying to do interesting things and, you know, collaborate with people that we like and, you know, inspire us and want to work together. And I think that's the human element that sometimes gets lost in the brand and artist partnership piece. And, you know, you always make it a point to meet the artist and for the artist to meet the company and sort of build that human relationship. And, you know, and, and that sort of brings that context to where things like money, um, you know, it doesn't feel greedy. It doesn't feel like it's, it doesn't become taboo if you have a relationship because that's part of the equation, right? I was having a conversation with the CMO friend of mine who was saying, well, they, this artist should do, and it wasn't Coke, they should do something for us for free because it'll be good for them. I said, well, why don't you do this job for free because that CMO title is going to look great on your resume and you'll cash that in in a couple of years. Right. He's like, he's like, Did I he get, do it? He's like, I get your point. Yeah. I get your point, right? I mean, like, there is the long-term sort of benefit, but there also is the need to, like, you know, pay the people that are doing the work and the people that are doing the work for you, right? I mean, I'm sure you have a team of people that you need to like, you know, feed when you go on tour and you, you know, right. making records. So the money does, does, does become important. But let's talk about, let's go back to the marketing piece too because that to me is equally as important. When you partner with a with an, uh, brand, when you look for a brand partnership, um, and you look at the potential to reach audiences. Do you look at brands that have similar audiences to yours, or would you like to find brands that have maybe different audiences that you're not reaching through your sort of conventional uh, promotional um, uh, methods? That, yeah, that's a tough question because it's not black and white. Mm. I think both cases could be true. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking from my perspective with our band, Dear Rouge, looking to break out more. Mm. Uh, we are looking for new audiences. Yeah, and um, particularly in the U.S., right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a market you haven't really made a, a, yeah. a, a, a sort of priority on your. Totally. Yeah, we yet. we broke out in Canada, and it's been great. And now, you know, as we we finished our second album, we're going to backing to writing, and we're directing our efforts down to the states to see if our band can succeed like we have in Canada. Cool. Um, so for us, from our perspective right now, both could apply. Um, the new audience would be great because it's new listeners, potentially new fans. Mm. Um, but then if it's the same audience, if it's the right brand, I've seen a lot of bands where it's the same audience, but they're just making it deeper and there's another connection. Um, there was this campaign in Canada where the band uh, got a beer commercial for the, like, the main hockey ad during the playoffs, and it's like everybody who's watching those hockey games knows that band, but it became an anthem of that mm -hmm. playoffs, made it deeper. So I would say yes to both, depending on the scenario. Very cool. And we're going to take questions in a minute, but I want to do one more question uh, on the van side, or actually more you sort of personally, it doesn't have to be vans related. Who's the artist that you haven't worked with yet that you would just love to work with in some way, even if it maybe isn't vans right? Oh, personally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Neil Young would like pick up the phone. Ah, right. <laughs> but like, no offense, Neil, but you're probably, you know, yeah. not really Vans appropriate. I wonder yeah. if you'd do it. Yeah. But the <laughs> thing is, is like if Mel, the 25 year old sitting here, she doesn't know who yeah. Neil Young is. So yeah. I got to go with Mel. Yeah. Um, I mean, on, on a brand side, oh, well, I'm, I'm really currently in love with Tierra Whack. Like, I just. Like, I don't, you know, it, working on the music side, you just, you just can't fangirl out, you know, you just yeah. like, but then there's just yeah. one. Like, I just got goosebumps <laughs> talking about her. Like, I really just love what That's she's awesome. doing. Mm. I love how she's doing it. Like, I just want in. Yeah. So I'm trying to, <laughs> if, if they're listening. But yeah. um, I'm really, like, in terms of newer artists, yeah. um, I'm excited about her. Um, I've always wanted to see what Radiohead would do from a marketing perspective. And when I was at Coke, I had a chance to meet them. I'm like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, Neil Young would never do any marketing like, employee anyways. This the, hey, this is Joe from Coca-Cola. Like, that's yeah. the worst possible thing you could probably say to those guys, right? I think that's yeah. why I'm appealed. Like, the curmudgeony kind of, like, right. won't mess with the brand. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's always, yeah. like, yeah, that white whale. Yeah. Right, yeah. Interesting. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I, cool. there's, always, there's always artists that I, you know, would like to do more with. Questions? Do we have? To? I can't see because the see light either. is really bright. Well, that's good. Cool. Hi, Sarah. 
Um, my question is, do you have to be a cool brand to be in music, or are there uncool brands that are doing cool things in music? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I have I, an opinion. I mean, I have an opinion, but... Uh, it, 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 I think it goes back to what you said at the very beginning, where it's a pillar of van. So, you know, you right. know, we know when we talk about vans, or like say we're in the tour van or two bus and talking about vans, we know the link. We know, you know, all the skaters. We know the bands that have been associated with it. And it's ingrained in the brand. But if, you know, Crest Toothpaste all of a sudden just wanted to dive into music. They do. They, I think yeah. Kelsey Ballerini has this, like, Crest ad. Um, it's, really? And when they, yeah. I guess, I guess a different type of band. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's very, that's Different country. type of use. Lots of smiling. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think about, you know, the ways you use music, if you're going to get to that attention, you could have everything from simply having a really strong sonic identity that you're using in your advertising that connects with people, and it could be, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, the creative artist partnerships that are happening, and, and you know, everything in between from using music as a media platform to reach people on Spotify or, or um, you know, or iHeart. But, um, you know, it really depends on, like, you know, does it come from a place where, um, you're delivering on something that's true to the brand. I mean, I've seen the most you know, ridiculous you know, um, executions from brands that I, I just never would have thought of that are really clever. I think, like you Lady know, Gaga and a Doritos vending machine. I said clever. Um, no, I, no, that one was just like, you know, like, yeah. ah. I know, right? Unless anybody here is from Doritos, then it was really cool. I don't think they are. Okay. I, think, I think they got Cheetos here, but not Doritos. But I, um, I agree. That's just, yeah. it's knowing your brand, like. It's knowing your brand, yeah. right? And how, and how does your brand affect the artist and taking ownership of that, you know? Like, artists get colds, too. Like, there might be something there, you know? Like, if it's but, a cold medicine. Yeah, like, but I don't know but if like, you, yeah. I and I guess, I guess every company you know, is, is using music, is partnering with music. Yeah. So it is, it is how you do that and sticking to that sincerity and the organic uh, relationship, partnership. Yeah. And it's, music. it's easy to look at the obvious, like, oh, this is the face, but there's other ways. Like, again, like, talking about how really, there were the obvious ways when I started at Vans, but then when I sat down and um, it was really like a whole, what felt like forever, but onboarding with every department and really learning how music touches their department. Yeah. And then realizing, like, I didn't even, I, A, I'm in over my head, but B, like, it touches every single department. Yeah. So if you t learn or if you think about, take a step back, like, you know, from a sync opportunity to music in your store to, you know, yeah. there's, I think there's ways where it doesn't have to be, like, this gross, like, poster boy for your brand, but... Um, I think there's ways yeah, to be honest and authentic. Target, right? I mean, I don't know if you get this here in Canada, but the, the insurance, the farmer's insurance nationwide, State Farm, like they're all over music, right? And a lot of them are those cheesy little jingles, right? But they get stuck in your head, right? And they're creating that brand identity, that, that, that retention, so. That's, yeah. I mean, like, and then it doesn't even have to be a sync for their song. Yeah. Like, it mm -hmm. could be an original score. You're then enabling their creativity. Um, and I think, again, knowing what the artist is after. There, there is a freedom in that when it's not your song as a band and someone approaches you yeah. saying, can you write a song like this or can you help uh, partner with this so add and write a song? <laughs> and so you can, you can dive into that and enjoy that, but it's not your content that you're releasing as a band. Oh, it's not, it's not on an album, it's not yeah. a single. So you have a little bit of freedom where you're like, okay. And you get paid. Enjoy. And you get paid. There you go. Cool. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm just wondering, like nowadays with social media, Instagram, um, you're talking about like once you find that perfect partnership and you have a, a great relationship, how do you how do you amplify your brand? Like, how do you grow it through music? Like, other than here's a social post of X artist wearing your clothes, and yes, we play your songs in our stores, but like, how do you how do you build that out to be bigger, better? How do you bring it to life? And, and I guess like some examples that you've seen of good partnerships that have gone the extra mile to make it work for both brands. I mean, how do you take it from them just doing a social post to? Yeah, how do you, how do you take it from that? But then also like, like what are some examples of how you could further it than just a social post and yeah. playing, some, uh, playing in your stores and logo on their website like just your standard sponsorship stuff, but like how do you actually make it a partnership and then how do you, how do you make it bigger? Right, I mean, for me personally, like I'm, 
I'm watching them. Like, you know, or I, I constantly email our social team and be like, like this, comment here. Um, and, then, and then building on that is, again, just like going to their shows, knowing what their career is, saying, hey, I see that you're routing through London. And I realize that not all brands are positioned to do this, but I do think there is a takeaway of that authenticity of their, like being invested in their career. So I do say, hey, you're rolling through London. We have a house of vans in London there. Or uh, quite frankly, like I'll, I'll even email them and say, happy birthday. Here's a custom code. Like I think, and, and to answer your question, that goes a long way or much can go a lot farther than the paycheck because then I'm not paying them to post it. They're posting it because they really want to and because they care about a brand. And hopefully, we're a brand that cares about them. Um, I mean, and for Vans, it's a bit unique. but. Because of that mutual partnership, we'll, we'll create larger stages for them, metaphorically and, and literally, to perform on. And ideally, they grow with us, and those opportunities grow. So the exposure mutually grows. And I, I think more generally, when you, when you look at what Vans is doing, or any brand that's successful in music, they're doing it for a very specific reason. And I think sometimes brands get excited about the things they could be doing in music and, hey, let's do this festival and let's do this, but they're not leaking it back to their business, right? What is the strategy? What is the objective you're trying to drive? And if you're trying to drive engagement on social, okay, there's a way to use music to do that. If you're trying to drive, um, uh, get into new environments where you know, you're not reaching those that audiences and you're using music to do that, that's great. If you're using music to establish your brand in you know, uh, uh, um, a different context, that's great. Like you really have to come back to what are you trying to do as a brand and then how can music help you do that? And I think that's the, the first step that actually gets lost a lot of times in music because people get so excited by it. They forget, like, why are we doing this? What are we trying to do as, for, for our business? Because um, then, if they did, they'd see that return on the investment. I go back to that yeah, all the time. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a great point. That's a better answer. <laughs> Look, there's no better. It's all good. Yeah. Good score. I got a quick question for you, Joe. Yeah. Um, do you have any examples of grassroots, um, like if you're not, not a Super Bowl, not a commercial, mm -hmm. but you do band-brand collaborations all the time. Um, if you were a brand in here <coughs> that hasn't mm. used music or hasn't looked at music as a platform, and obviously it has to align to their values. Yeah. What are some examples of maybe out of the box brands that have done exciting or interesting campaigns that are accessible to? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't, I always get put on the spots for examples, Sorry. right? But I, I think like, you know, you have to look at it like if you're a smaller brand or you're a grassroots brand, um, there were two things I used to do at Coke from a music perspective. One was very consumer facing. When we created music around the World Cup or the Olympics or Avicii, Selena Gomez partnerships, right? That was very much brand building. Then there was another layer of things I used to do that created a lot of value within our system. So if you think about your, your business, like there's probably stakeholders along the way. There's distributors, retailers, there's partners, there's all these things you need to activate to have a successful business. That was true at Coke. We didn't actually sell Coke to human beings. We sold it to restaurants and bars and 7-Elevens and Targets and Walmarts. So a lot of the things I would do was creating value in those channels. So sometimes you want to use music to help you get into retail channels. If you're a clothing brand and you're trying to break into retail, you can partner with an artist to do live shows for that retail, um, uh, retailer, which helps drive audience there. If you're looking to get distribution for your you know, cosmetic line and you're going to all these sort of shops and you go with a local artist who's going like, to help amplify that story and, and bring value to that retailer, then you have a better chance of getting that placement within stores, right? So you have to look at it like not just from a consumer perspective, but again, look at your business. Look at the things you're trying to do on the grassroots level and can music help you do that more effectively, right? Can it help you create that connection? Can it help you get into those places you're trying to get into? For your business. Right. right. Yeah. I'll think of examples, though. I'll have them for next year. <laughs> Hey, I'm Connor. Nice to meet you guys. Um, this is more on the artist side, I guess. Like, because obviously with the decline of album sales, I, I mean, I think that there's a decline, right, with streaming and everything. But um, with that, as an artist, like, you have a lot of local artists that come out that are like trying to sell their, you know, ten, twenty dollar album to an audience that's never heard of them. Like, do you think that that's a solid strategy, or or should it be more that your music is the actual advertising and the marketing out there, and like? Get that out there for free and, and give away CDs, give away digital download cards, build your brand so that you can attract those brands in. Or I guess, what do you, how do you view 
that space in terms of like an emerging artist coming out, trying to make a paycheck, should they make that investment and give it out for free or try to recoup their like studio costs? That's a good cost? question. So the question is an, a new artist, yeah. should they give their music for free yeah. or not? Yeah. I think the industry has spoken that you give your music away for free because you're gonna wanna pursue streaming channels which are gonna help your band way more than any compact CD or vinyl will. Um, but when you're, I would say when you're playing shows though, uh, you don't need to give away hard copies for free. You can always sell that and that's expected. At a merch table at a show, you have your CDs, that's fine, but in terms of releasing your band, yeah, it's essentially going out there for free. It's the music that you're wanting ears um, on for sure. So we're at uh, zero on our timer. So thank you, Tierney. Thank you, Drew. And uh, thank you guys for... Yeah. Well, thank you. Good deal.